Every Child Foundation exists to fund innovative prototype projects helping underserved children. I created Every Child Foundation in the early 1990s after my first child was born. Motherhood made me more attuned to the fact that without strong advocates, kids have a very small voice in America. I wanted to change this by developing a nonprofit that would seek out and fund innovative projects to ease suffering of children. I envisioned a program that would make a serious difference in children's lives and that could be replicated nationally and internationally. I also wanted to affect change in public policies for children who have the least voice. However, the typical charity model that relies upon gala events to raise funds frustrated me. I found that planning these functions and soliciting donors is not the best use of our time because they require a lot of effort and cash. Plus, it's difficult to track the impact of the donations. There often isn't feedback given to the donors. I knew there had to be a better way for donations to have a tangible, measurable, and monitored impact and to be leveraged to the greatest extent possible. Additionally, I craved an organization that would select different critical unmet needs each year instead of one locked into a single cause where donor fatigue may develop. Every Child Foundation seeks to ease the suffering of children caused by disease, disability, abuse, neglect, or poverty by funding a single new prototype project annually serving Los Angeles children. Our annual goal is to raise $1 million through member dues for our grant. Our process is thorough. First, our screening committee reviews about 50 proposals to ultimately select two finalists. Then our entire membership chooses between the two to select our grantee. Notifying the runner-up that we can't fund their project is the most difficult part of our work. We find it truly heartbreaking each year to have to turn away a very worthy, outstanding project simply because we only have the resources to fund one. The two finalists have been both extremely well vetted, having demonstrated the ability to be replicated, as well as great innovation for filling critical unmet needs of children. Therefore, every year, we seek to fund other funders to help make the runner-up project a reality too. However, with the fluctuating economy, we have also found it increasingly harder to raise the full $1 million for the agency that does receive our grant. If we were lucky enough to have money to fund both finalists, we would use any additional dollars to help inform the public about our projects and our philanthropic model. We do not normally spend much money on public relations, but if we could, we believe it would help spur replication of our projects and our organization itself. Every Child Foundation's practice of only targeting new prototypes has had enormous ripple effects across the nation and, in some cases, even worldwide. For example, one project we funded sent staff from a health clinic into the homes of young asthma patients who were sickened by the interiors of their slum housing. The staff showed parents how to eliminate asthma triggers and was so successful in reducing the number of missed school days and parent work days to stay home with their sick children that they expanded the program to serve its vast adult asthma patient population. It has now become a national model. Another example is a career pathway program serving at-risk youth that provides wraparound services. The program first provides education for the youth and then ultimately places them in living wage jobs with partner companies. It has now been expanded statewide. Our ripple effects are dramatic. Additionally, through the grants that we award, we become educated advocates about the issues addressed by other children's organizations. We have learned to speak out, educate the public, and also help impact legislation and policy changes. Our public policy committee advocates at all levels of government on specific issues, homeless youth, aging out foster youth, juvenile justice reform, and investment in early childhood development. Our foundation is effective due to its focus upon tangible, measurable results. The finalist projects we select are chosen entirely upon their ability to fill critical unmet needs of children and the likelihood of their replication by others. The guidance we receive from a professional, well-respected grant consultant is a second key to our effectiveness. We can't afford to make a mistake with the size of the grants we award. Therefore, the training she provides us 
as well as her insights are invaluable. She knows what to look for financially, administratively, and strategically. Also, it is notable that the women on the grant screening board generally commit to a four-year term, so there is a lot of experience and knowledge in the group. Third, because of our very meticulous award process and the controls we have in place, we are known in Los Angeles as having the gold standard in grant selection. So much so that other well-established private foundations have from time to time piggybacked on our grants over the years. However, because of economic uncertainty, many of these foundations have shifted their grant making to more stopgap kinds of funding to help keep smaller local agencies afloat. Finally, we closely monitor each and every project we fund to make certain the organizations are doing what they were designed to do. We essentially become partners with each agency over time, forming close relationships with them in our mutual quest to make each grant as successful as possible. First, since our inception in 2000, we have awarded nearly $10 million in grants with very little fundraising expenses and zero fundraising events. We have directly served roughly half a million children and countless more with the many replications of the prototypes we have funded. Additionally, there are now at least 10 spin-off groups that every child has inspired, including two in London, one in Las Vegas, and two in Santa Barbara, who are serving children and or women. Some serve local populations and some serve children as far away as Romania, and they like to report their successes back to us. Almost every year, our runner-up projects have received funding resulting from the exposure they garnered as a result of our grant process. In fact, in more than one instance, the runner-up was able to receive a full $1 million. All of our finalist agencies have reported back to us that the feedback they received from us during our grant process helped them to improve many aspects of their organizations and also helped them secure even more funding. Finally, we measure success by the number of bills for which we have advocated and even created that have become law, along with the number of various governmental policies that have changed as a result of our intervention. Many people assume that every child is a group of 200 women who pool dues of $5,000 each and together grant $1 million each year to a carefully selected recipient while incurring no operating expenses. Actually, our goal each year is to have 225 members grant $1 million to an innovative program, use $100,000 for operations, and reserve $25,000 as a cushion. While we have no employees or rents since every child is located in my home office, we cannot completely escape operational costs. Our key expenses are professional grant consultant who has paid $60,000 annually. Since we only make a single $1 million grant each year, we cannot afford to make a mistake. Our consultant trains our grant screening volunteers, helps to vet the projects, and guides grant outreach as well with her wide set of connections. She also assists with grant monitoring and public policy advocacy efforts. The remaining $40,000 in our budget pays for an annual professional tax return and audit, hourly bookkeeping and clerical work, directors and officers insurance, as well as printing, postage, and other miscellaneous expenses. Regardless of the number of members we have, we always set aside the first $100,000 raised for the following year's operations. All dollars raised after that go toward the grant. In addition to serving over half a million children directly and awarding nearly $10 million in grants, we are proud that we were also named the Outstanding Private Foundation in Los Angeles by the Association of Fundraising Professionals in 2004, the newest foundation ever awarded that honor. Secondly, we are thrilled by the fact that we have inspired the creation of at least 10 other spin-off groups and that so many of our awarded projects have been replicated, some as far away as Bangladesh, believe it or not. We have also helped create important legislation in California, assisting former foster youth who have had their identity stolen while in foster care. And at the AB 12 bill signing ceremony, we were publicly recognized by then Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. We were fierce advocates for this legislation that allows foster youth to remain in care until age 21 if they desire, instead of being forced to age out at 18. We have also been a leader in efforts to bring juvenile justice reform to Los Angeles. 
the gang capital of the world. Every Child organized a trip to Kansas City for 25 LA County officials and academic leaders to see the nationally recognized Missouri model program firsthand. We are also spearheading a move for more youth diversion programs. I was also invited to the White House to speak to President Obama's administration officials about promulgating these programs nationwide. Although our membership attrition is extremely low, about 4 to 6 percent each year, we have had some trouble sustaining our annual goal of 225 female members with a downturn in the economy. Up until recently, we relied upon a cushion we had in the bank from interest earned on our grant dollars that were not all paid out in one lump sum. Some of our grants have payment schedules. However, that cushion is now gone, and we are seeking ways to build back necessary funds. If we had additional resources, we would supplement our annual grant in the event we were short of the $1 million in any particular year. Beyond that, we would try to fund the runner-up project to make it a reality, too. It's very sad, heartbreaking, actually, each year when we have to turn away a project that has been thoroughly vetted and is extremely compelling. These runner-up organizations have beaten out roughly 50 other agencies to get to the final round. Then every child members have to tell them, sorry, we can't fund you. However, we would be happy to connect a donor with a runner-up organization so that the donor could fund the project directly and perhaps receive naming rights if he or she wanted to fund the runner-up in its entirety. We are happy to be a conduit of any kind. Beyond that, we would like to fund a public relations budget in order to publicize our projects, encourage other organizations to replicate our model, and to change their thinking about how to address certain children's issues. One thing we wish we could do but haven't been able to do is interface with the press more in order to receive more publicity for our grants. That way the prototypes we fund could become even further replicated. Whenever one of our projects achieves even a little bit of press, we often receive calls from people around the country wanting to learn how they can duplicate the project. It really saddens us that many of these amazing projects aren't getting enough attention because they are literally saving and changing lives.